Hi there and welcome to lesson 1 of my comms 1018 video tutorial series. In this lesson we're going to be going over the basic structure of a C++ program and we're going to familiarize ourselves with some of the common syntax that we use in C++ so that we can write our own C++ programs from scratch in the future. So what are some of the objectives of this lesson? What should we know by the end? So by the end we should have a basic understanding of what comments are, what an include directive is, namespaces, we'll be covering the main function, we'll also be going over outputting data, and with that we'll be just briefly touching on escape sequences, and then we're also going to speak about semicolons, which can be confusing. So, by basic understanding, I mean you just we're just going to make sure you know enough just get your feet wet so that you can write start writing your own programs because obviously you want to get off the ground so for this video tutorial we're going to be working through this example program over here it's really quite basic it's about as basic as you can get um, it just simply outputs hello world and we're just going to be going through line by line and discussing what each line means so we'll first speak about the comments. So the comments are all of these lines in green. So what is a comment? So a comment is basically it's annotations that can be made in to the code to explain exactly what is going on or to help with the readability of code. So if you think about comments, you have you might have code that does quite a complex math um, calculation or something, it uses a complex formula or something, you might want to explain what you're doing as you're going through doing the calculation with comments because otherwise it can be a bit confusing if someone just comes and looks at your code they'll have no idea what's going on without a comment that guides them through the code. Um, the thing with comments, they're ignored by the compiler so they don't affect the functionality of your program in any way. Um, you should make it a habit to use them. A lot of people don't, including myself sometimes. You know, it's just like, it feels unnecessary, but it's actually quite important if you want to come back to your code at a later stage. So make it a habit, but don't overuse comments. Um, your code should be able to speak for itself most of the time. There will be, of course, you'll sometimes have code that might be a bit more complex. It's not obvious at first sight, so then you might have to use comments, but don't overuse them. And then you get two types of comments, so you can use any of these types depending on how you just be consistent. So you get your inline comments, which is your your forward slash, so you indicate it with two forward slashes at the beginning, and then the rest of the line that follows is a comment, so the compiler will ignore it. So here's an example, I'm an inline comment. You can see over here we have our two forward slashes. And then we have our comments after it, which the compiler ignores. Then we also get block comments, which are indicate which start with a forward slash star and end with a star forward slash. And basically, these can span over multiple lines. So if you look here, you'll see that my comment spans over multiple lines, and it begins with a forward slash star and it ends with a star forward slash. So those are all the different types of comments you get. Next, we're going to be covering the include directives. So in this case, this is the hash, I, hash include IO stream. So if we think, so what is an include directive? An include directive, basically, it instructs the compiler to replace the line with the entire contents of a specified file. So here we just have a line that says hash include IO stream. What, that, what the compiler does with that is it basically goes and it looks for the IO stream file and it places the entire contents of that file here. It's also important to know that um, if the other files contain directives, they will also be included. So in this case, we are including IOStream. So IOStream basically defines the standard C++ input and output functions. Um, so we're doing this so that we can use the C out here later, which you'll see, we'll explain it a bit later. But yeah, this is just the basic file that allows us to input and output to the console. 
Then we have our using namespace STD. So what this means is it means we're using the standard namespace, which is abbreviated to STD in C++. And this basically means we're going to be using the default, the standard library files and definitions. So C++ comes with a standard library and we that includes stuff it includes a whole bunch of features that we're going to be using in this case we're using c out and c in which reside inside the standard library and if we were to omit this using namespace std here if we were to just leave that out instead of being able to say instead of saying c out and c in we would have to say std colon colon c out and std colon colon c in so it's it's a bit length it's a bit longer and in this case we can use namespace std uh, we can define our own namespaces if we want to avoid naming conflicts but we're not going to worry about that too much right now next we're going to cover this main function so this main function is basically it's the where the program begins executing instructions so when you start your program it executes all the instructions inside the main function first that's where it starts so if we were to look at the main function you'll see we start with a int over here so we start with int and what that basically it indicates that the function this whole thing's a function is going to return an integer and in this case this integer indicates whether the program ran successfully or not and also another thing to note is the program stops the moment the integer is returned so anywhere inside your block you could say return an integer and then the program will stop immediately but we'll get there now now then we have our main over here and our main is basically the function name and when we talk about the main function the name of the main function is always lowercase main that's the function that the compiler looks for or that's the function that is first executed then we have brackets after the name and the brackets basically indicate that this is a function we're declaring um, and not some sort of variable or anything it's a function then we have you'll see we have these curly braces over here an open one and a closing one and this is basically the function body and it consists of all the code inside these two curly braces so this is a um, and all the code inside these curly braces are what's executed when this function is run so when we execute our program it executes all the lines of code inside these two curly braces then lastly we have this return zero so this basically just means it's returning an integer at the end of the program that indicates if the program ran successfully or failed so if it ran successfully return a zero if it failed you can return any other number now we're going to look at the C out which is basically outputting um, text to the console so when we so we're using the C out function and that comes from the standard library which we imported using namespace std okay so let's look at the syntax of the console out C out command so if we look at it, we have this C out here, and that basically outputs the string to the that follows to the console. So if you look, we have angle bracket, angle bracket in the direction of our C out, and then we have the string which we want to output. So we want to just print hello world to the console. Then after that, we also have this end L. And what end L that basically does is it basically flushes the buffer so that the text actually outputs to the console and then it places the cursor at the beginning of the next line in the console so it basically prints everything gets to the end of the line and then it jumps to the next line to the beginning of the next line so you needn't don't worry about this flushing too much um, we'll, we won't go into much detail about that right now then with outputting we'll just quickly touch on escape sequences so what is an escape sequence? So an escape sequence is basically a special character sequence that represents other characters that may be difficult or impossible to represent directly. So if we were to think of an example, we could think of a new line character. 
if we normally just entering in a new line character, we just say enter. But we can't just go in the middle of our source code and press enter to represent a new line character. It will break the syntax of C++. It will complain. So in that case, we have a special character sequence that represents a new line. So here, for example, you can see here's a few common character sequences. So you get backslash n, which is new line, and basically just moves the cursor to the beginning of the next line. Then we have black backslash t, which is basically a horizontal tab, and that moves the cursor to the next tab stop. Then we have backslash r, which is a carriage return, which basically moves the cursor to the beginning of the current line. So it goes back to the beginning of the line. Backslash a is an alert. And that basically sounds a bell and it's useful for notifications and stuff. Then, you, because we're using backslash to escape all these characters, if we want to print a backslash, we have to escape a backslash. So it's backslash, backslash, and that will print a single backslash. And then also, you saw with our hello world, we use double quotes around our string. So if we want to print out a double quote, we have to go backslash double quote to escape it. Otherwise, if we were to just put the double quote in, it will break the C++ syntax. Last of all, and it's not very clear, but we want to go over semicolons. Just quickly touch on it. So, in C++, it's quite simple. All statements are terminated by a semicolon. The only exception is code blocks, and those contain curly braces. So containing code inside. So if you think back to our function, our main function, we had an open curly brace and a closing curly brace and there was no semicolon after that closing curly brace. You'll see later also um, if statements and for loops and stuff, we don't use semicolons after those curly braces. And that's all for this video. I hope it was informative and I hope you learned something. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it made sense. So in the next video, we'll be discussing variables.